Hi Q, season two, episode eighteen. Boo, boo, Dante. <laughs> Oh, oh! I spoke too soon. I thought Dot Tech Tech, tech was next for Karasuno, but I feel like I'd rather see a, a Josai rematch. Yeah. Yep. Simple set of parameters. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, we got a little preview of this match. It doesn't look like it's going well. The Daichi absence arc <laughs> continues. I feel empty inside. Empty and cold without him. I know he's coming back. I know it's not a serious injury. But the sheer amount of comments I'm getting on Patreon about R.I.P. Daichi honestly kind of got to me emotionally. If you see something enough times, you know, it's hard not to believe it. Episode 18, The Losers. What's the score? What's the score? Don't show me the score. <laughs> Whoa, that just sped way the hell up. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it! Alright, not a lot of breathing room. Lost their mojo. <laughs> yeah, there's like... It's interesting to see the split between players. Some of them seem to rally under the pressure. Tanaka, Asahi, they're playing their best. Part of me wants to see Hinata just like let loose, let him fly. I feel like we've we've learned better to bet against Hinata, take it on a challenge. Let Hinata loose. Get it. Special technique. What the? Oh no, <laughs> see not. I believe in you. <laughs> Whoa, against the wall. Don't mind. Oh, it's fake, fake. There we go, there we go. Oh, damn it. They're just all over it. He keeps doing that every single time. Watch out, coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took it. Took a real dive there, took a spill, when the bench gets involved in the physicality of the game. His heart. You leave. Oh, that looked good, that looked great. That's right, rally! Pick it up. Oh god. And not a nice kill? Yeah, we were... We're already pretty thin. And then a battle erupts mid-game. All tied up, 6-6. Six, six. You know, she just saw it! Oh my god, I didn't think he was gonna make that. That was really well animated. It's alright, I can feel, I can feel it. I feel the energy changing. Don't no, no. mind. Stop apologizing, everyone stop apologizing, just play well. <laughs> everyone feels the same way. That's because Daichi is 17 or 18 going on 40. I want to see Daichi come back out of the, the locker room with a win on the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel like he, he was going to go wrong no matter how you slice it if he was trying to be Daichi. There's only one Daichi in this universe. I mean, I feel like I get stuck on this all the time, you know? There's the thing I can see, the thing I want to be. It's easy to get so wrapped up in the vision of that and all the ways I'm not there yet, all the inadequacies I have currently that I get bogged down and end up going nowhere at all. There's an optimal point and that's not really output determined, it's growth determined. And that will be on the cusp or right on that point between everything that you are and can do and just a little bit out ahead of your skis, just a tiny bit into the unknown. This team's strength on the court right now is not Inoshida, as cool as he's turned out to be. It's the whole team, every individual on it. I feel like if Inoshida can just plug a hole, fill a key gap so that it's not a weakness, the other players can form around that base and then let Hinata take the lead like he wants to. I trust him. And I think just narratively speaking, in line with a lot of things that have happened in the show, that is what would feel the best. Like we've learned from Asai, for example, not going for the the jump serve when he knows he can. That's kind of what's important. You want them to just play at their best as the goal because to a certain degree, the outcome has already been established before the match even begins based on their talent. The only real shame is if they don't play to their talent. Oh, 
あのちょっといいですか I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata out front. I hope this ends with him pushing Hinata Oof. <laughs> Hell yeah, that felt good. They're gonna connect. Yeah, I don't know. They just need like some kind of spiritual redirections, spiritual energy. Cause I got the talent. Put in his body on the line. Put it everything on the line. Time for Hinata Vision. Yep. Uh, I see. Resetting. Purposely resetting. Smart. Yeah. Man, that was a useful training camp. They really like set all this stuff up. They're setting the pace. It'll be so interesting to see if he ends up becoming captain at some point. There it is. Taking that back. Taking the energy back. <laughs> I just felt it. <laughs> the psychic link between these characters is unreal. That was the whole point of that reset. That was the whole point of the training camp. That used to be true. It's all paying off very directly. That feels good, doesn't it, Enoshida? Earning her place on this court. What character growth in like one or two episodes? I'm sorry that I forgot your name. This poor kid, this poor kid, he just can't. Every every tournament, just trauma for him. How do we get him involved and moving his feet? He's the second coming of Volleyball Jesus. All tied up. No! <laughs> Oh, size up, this should be good. He like gets a lot of aces. Kagama! Yes! Wait, hit the ground, hit the ground, hit the ground. I don't like the suspense, it's taking too long. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you, Tabi. Stop rallying! Oh no, Hinata's taking a rest. I'm just speeding through this game. It's a good sign when the other team is relying on the other team making mistakes as their strategy. Why, do, why does the other team always have to be people with hopes and dreams? Why are they too capable of growth? It's annoying. In Suki's way, you can see he's getting much more involved. Not a, oh. Nice. Two points. Two points. Two points. I'm sure it'll be undramatic, decisive victory with no drama. Oh! He's so cl clutch from there. Okay. It's alright. No mind. Don't mind. Yes. Thank God that we're not the only ones making mistakes. The benefits of the other team being human. Such low stakes threat, <laughs> but alright. It's just one. It's just one. Just one. Someone's got it. Enoshita. Oh no. Man, I, it's gotta be so crazy hard to be focused and calm at a moment like this. This is the tournament at stake. Clutch. Someone else. Oh, he got his other hand. Well, imagine giving advice like that and coaching like mid point. They look so unified right now. Okay, now they going up. I don't know, look kind of deep. I went pretty far. Okay. Right to the setup. Here we go. This is it. It's game over. Game over. Free chumps. 
I see the hole. <laughs> Even I saw that one. <laughs> Stop it! There you go. Thank you. Next! <laughs> wow, what a relief. Wow, what a relief. Everyone give Enoshida a big hug, please. Show your tenacity in loss. Show us your fighting spirit from the bleachers. <laughs> yes. I drink your tears. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Now I love them because they... They're no longer a threat. That was a really incredible match among a lot of great tournament matches in this series so far. There's a bunch of things I liked about it. One thing is it ends up being a really stirring tribute to Daichi, whose presence I've felt, but I feel like hasn't been explicitly focused on and shown to be as important as, as it is until he's gone and you're like, wait a minute. In many ways, Daichi is the foundation of the team and he's the one who lets them channel all of their raw talent and energy into being as good as they've become. He's the human version of one of the themes of the, the show so far where it's when you are at a a certain skill level when you're at a certain level of mastery that you can really become great and then have fun. We've seen time and time again Daichi kind of like curving their edges a little bit, keeping just this raw chaotic energy channeled into this tunnel focus. One of the moving things about it in that regard is that even without Daichi, it's like Daichi is still on the court. They're all kind of living up to his legacy. It's still his team and he's rubbed off on them enough where he's such a core part of their culture that even Enoshida's benchmark for success is becoming Daichi. Though of course, and I guess somewhat ironically, by kind of giving up on the idea of replacing Daichi, he becomes very Daichi-like, which is knowing his role, being a good manager, and giving them the best chance of success. While I really want a victory, obviously, like I want to see a championship, I think just in terms of the human story, you know, the point of it, it's not the games, it's the growth. You can imagine at a level of competition like this, where everyone's so skilled, to a certain extent, the outcome could be guessed, you know, it could be determined before they even begin. The, the tragedy of it would be if they got in their own way, if they weren't playing in that optimal zone of being the best they could be, if there was no growth, if there was nothing to learn. And what makes this episode inspiring is that they did manage to hit that. They, they reached their, their maximal point, pushed a little bit beyond it. They're growing mid-game. And as a bonus, the outcome actually was favorable and they won and Daiji gets to come back seeing a victory. Now, if we can only get Yamaguchi, poor, poor, sweet Yamaguchi, to get somewhere because this poor kid is... <laughs> 0 for 2 in tournament play. 2 and 2 for meltdowns. <laughs> Wow. Now that is a sight for sore eyes. Everyone stop apologizing. It's a very Daichi answer. I was about to say, yeah, you can't just leave without talking to Enoshida. So he was watching. Oh, damn. That's some faith right there. What an honor to be acknowledged by Daichi. I need to cry a lot. I'm just probably overwhelmed. It's just an like emotion dump. I don't, oh yeah, well Yamaguchi, yeah, he's down. I need to cry a lot into the sink. <laughs> wow, way to not read between the lines there. Tsuki could go check on his friend, that would be nice. That's probably coming at some point. He kind of blew him off last time. That's a very Hinata thing to say. Abujo says going to take this. Wow, they play again today. Abujo Josai, calling it. Calling it. It's Abujo Josai. I'm going to call it right now. Abujo Josai in the semifinals. They win that and go on to face the team whose name I can never remember, featuring the, the current god of high school volleyball, Ishikawa. And I'm kind of torn on that outcome. Like, I really, obviously, want Karasuno to win, but man, the way that team is just rampaging through everyone, it's hard to say that in good faith. I mean, they have a chance, right? I think that's kind of the beauty of sports, is that a team can win 99 times out of 100, right? But maybe the tournament is that one out of 100th time, very unlikely, but it happens. They just have to be within range, and then you give your best game and see what happens. One thing that gives me a lot of hope is I feel like this experience of this game was very difficult. It was very risky for their, their chances, but was at that optimal point I'm talking about of growth, like because they were kind of handicapped without Daichi, they all had to kind of push themselves out a little bit, push their boundaries. So I feel like they've just been improved as a team. That's looking at it from a skill level, but also from a morale level. Daichi's back, you know, our leader's back.